Okay, here we are at the Tom Stafford Airport in Weatherford, Oklahoma. And we're going to the Tom Stafford Air and Space Museum. Weatherford, this is the Stafford Airport. Huh. And here's another airplane over here. Airplanes to your right. There's a bunch of airplanes to your This is the airport, I guess. Oh, yeah. Weatherford, this is the Stafford Airport. Huh. And here's another airplane over here. They have a reproduction here of the Wright Brothers Bicycle Shop and some old artifacts over there. And right here is a replica of the Wright Brothers 1903 Wright Flyer. Now this is a replica of the Wright Brothers 1903 flyer right here. So museum is incredible. Yeah. Wow, I found I didn't know about the museum here. We just saw the sign off the highway and stuff. This really exceeded my expectations. That's a replica of a 1911 Curtis Pusher hanging up there from the rafters. There's old Glenn Curtis there at the controls. <laughs> Weatherford, this is the Tom Stafford Airport. 
And right here is a 1916 soft with pup from World War I. I don't know if that's a replica or if that's a the genuine article or not, but it looks real. <laughs> And right over there is a replica of Charles Lindbergh's Spirit of St. Louis from 1927. Right there. Flew across the Atlantic Ocean. He was the first person to cross the Atlantic Ocean solo by himself. And right there is a a V-2 rocket engine from World War II era. That's one of old Hitler's rocket engines. And there it is, right there. One of Hitler's V2 rocket engines, the genuine article, designed by the German scientist Werner von Braun, who later designed the rocket engine that took US astronauts to the moon, the Saturn V rocket. And this rocket engine right here was captured by US soldiers in 1945, before the Nazis were able to launch this one. There it is, a genuine V-2 rocket engine right there. And right up there is the Bell X-1, the first airplane to break the speed of sound way back in 1947. Chuck Yeager flew the Bell X-1 and he broke the sound barrier. Chuck Yeager nicknamed his Bell X-1 Glamorous Glennis. That was his wife's name. <laughs> and there's old Glamorous Glimmis right there. And she still looks glamorous. The fuselage of this airplane was shaped like a 50 caliber bullet. And right here is a, an old F-86 from the Korean War era.
Okay, what we've got right here is a genuine moon rock right there. Was presented to General Stafford by President George W. Bush in 2004. It is a portion of a sample gathered by the crew members of Apollo 17 in 1972. This sample is formed on the moon from molten lava and is about 3.8 billion years old. A genuine moon rock right there. Here's a bottle of teacher's bourbon that all the astronauts have signed their name on the bottle. Something to the effect that says that the last man standing gets this bottle. <laughs> that sounds like a bunch of pilots, don't it? Pilots gotta have his gotta have his shot of liquor. <laughs> T-minus uh, 5 minutes and 16 seconds and counting. Let me tell you very quickly what you're going to be seeing and what you can sort of look for on this liftoff. The ignition sequence, the engines fire up 9 seconds before the actual liftoff. The uh, hold down arms are thrown away and away they go. That's to build up power and up they go, 7.5 million pounds of thrust. A liftoff comes uh, at that point at zero. Then they kind of uh, yaw a little bit. They turn around and pitch over to start their course out over the Atlantic uh, Ocean from here. At uh, 1 minute and 21 seconds into the flight, they reach the maximum, max Q, it's called, the maximum dynamic pressure. And this is a critical point in the flight. We're coming up on the 60-second mark. 60 seconds and counting. We are go for a mission to the moon at this time. The second stage tanks now pressurizing, and we're coming up on the power transfer. 50 seconds and counting. We have now switched to internal power satisfactorily on the batteries uh, of the first stage, the, all three stages of the Saturn V vehicle. 40 seconds and counting. Tom Stafford making a final check of his computer. The vehicle... Uh, all uh, stages pressurized at this time. We're waiting for the swing arms to come back. One uh, should be coming back at this time, a second one at 17 seconds. Tom Stafford reports they are go. We're coming up in the 20 second mark. T minus 20 seconds and counting. 17 seconds and counting, guidance internal. 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9. We have ignition sequence start. Engines on, five. Four, three, two, all engines running. Launch commit, lift off. We have lift off 49 minutes past the hour. Stafford reports the clock has started. The tower is clear. Tom Stafford acknowledges the roll and pitch program to put Apollo 2 in the proper order. Like that is. Picture.
temperature will break up a little bit because we are getting buffeted here now by the tremendous reverberations from that great engine. The building is shaking, the cameras are shaking. Rockets disappearing into the clouds. Back out through that cloud layer, it looks like it's gold. It looks like everything is going very well. Beauty so far. Yeah, the pressure is relieving. It's almost directly over what mile, 3.3 nautical miles high. Wash your ear now at Jack Riley, Mission Control in Houston. What a ride, babe. What a ride. What a ride. Sounds like Stafford saying, What a nice ride. Gene uh, Cernan reporting, What a ride. Uh, Roger, going three minutes to two. Roger. One minute, 44 seconds, downrange, 7 miles, 12 miles high. They successfully passed through Max Q. Roger, copy, Tom. We're in communication from the spacecraft. Code 1, Charlie, you're looking great. Code 1, Charlie, and Code 2, Jesus, please. You're here now. for staging, Ken. You're in the voice of the command pilot, Tom Stafford. Right. And the voice of mission control in Houston. Inboard engines are out. Okay. Roger, right, copy, Tom. EDS off, Ken. Duke uh, asking the crew to turn off their emergency, de emergency detection system. That staging you saw there. Roger. That was the uh, first Good stage. on the second stage. First stage blowing away from the rocket, leaving now just the second stage, right, third right, stage, right, and the uh, rocket. Stand on the S2. It's looking good. Uh, okay. Confirm EDS off. Flight Dynamics reports trajectory go at 3 minutes 9 seconds, downrange 81 miles, 46 miles high.